instant. And not only the hard copy, but even the soft copy. This, should, it's, it's, this is what we call transparency, and it's also very, very important. It should not even be should they, it should be right for them to receive it. And about IEC receiving funding from other uh, institutions, in my own view, I think it should, they should not receive funding from anywhere other than from government. Because the money they are receiving from government is the taxpayers' money. This is my money and the money of Keba. So I think it is very, very important for them to stick on receiving money from, from the government and not receiving money from other stakeholders. Unless it has to be maybe from the uh, international entities like the UNDP or, or UN. But from a private uh, 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 entities, I think that will make them biased. Because we are all human. Every stakeholder has a position. It's either you're supporting A or B, but if they are receiving the money from, from government, I think that will uh, give them more credibility. Um, and the issue of attestation. The issue of attestation, uh, Madam Chair, um, I think is very, very important to take the chefs out, the chiefs out of this attestation. To be quite honest, attestation should only, the alcalos should be the one giving the attestation. But if you have the chief, for example, a chief cannot know the whole uh, people in, his, uh, in uh, his or her region, but the alcalo can manage, even if there should be any irregularities, it will be not be so on a, on a, on a, on a, on a high stake. But for a chief to give attestation, <laughs> I, I, I think we should try to regulate that and limit it to with the, with the alcalos. Um, Madam Chair, I think these are the concerns I have. And that is to say the closing time of the Hello? just to sum it up this is the voting closing time of course i said six o'clock and people who are on the queue should vote 40 percent of the deposit is too high for someone just to lose 40 percent if you don't have 40 percent of the votes you have to lose the election you have to lose your deposit that is really really too high and uh, again, should the vice chairman announce the elections in case the chairman has um, difficulties in, 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 in doing so at that moment? Of course, I will say yes. And, and the, uh, the, the classical example have been seen here. The chair has just left the, 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 the room now. And who is there to, to chair the meeting now? It's the deputy chair. This is why we have deputies. It's to help. And we do even sometimes see it when the, when the speaker is not there. We see this, the, the, the deputy speaker being there. And it's doing exactly what the speaker is supposed to do at the, at the time. So definitely, I think that should not even be a debate. Yes, the, in my own view, the, the deputy chair should, be, uh, should take the place of the chairman in case the chairman cannot function at the time. And I talk about um, government funding, the IEC, and not any other um, stakeholders. And I talk about attestation, not supporting the chief to be part of it. And, um, and diaspora voting, of course, which is very, 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 very important. Um, Yes, Madam Chair, I think that was all what I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Lord Mayor of Banjo. If you can please do us a favor and put these points also in a position paper from now till Friday. The quicker, Monday, Monday. Monday, the quicker the better. Please. 
Uh, we'll move to the next person who, to hear your observations, please. All right, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I am Amber Wuxi with your Chairman Kuntao Area Council. Um, I just have some, about two observations. One is about uh, the deposit, uh, payment deposit for the presidency um, and the national assembly yeah, members and the chairpersons. Um, the observation I have here, I can see the National Assembly members and the chairpersons have the same um, payment deposit, uh, which I have observations. I think um, it should be deferred. Uh, the National Assembly members should have their own um, pay, payment deposit, and the chairperson has a, uh, this, uh, a different one. Um, the chairpersons, for my own observation, is on the high side compared to um, um, the National Assembly members. The other point is about the police stations. In the provinces, uh, we have a problem um, about the police stations. Most of our police stations are far from one another. So we will definitely um, recommend for um, an increase in the number of uh, police stations. Because, for example, in Kau, um, all the surrounding villages are coming to Kau for vote, which is almost three or four kilometers from their distance. So I recommend if we can have at least a, every kilometer a pulling station, uh, that would be uh, best for our people. Thank you very much. <coughs> Very much, Honorable Chairperson. Um, Honorable Chairperson of the Kamala Area Council. Good morning, and thank you very much for giving me the floor. Um, I want to make some observations. Um, of course, some of the things in mind were written by the previous speakers. But notwithstanding, I think uh, I still have one to um, observe. That is a um, time of leading office for local government um, officers, like local government authorities, like the, the, the mayors, chairpersons, and councillors leading office three months before election, while National Assembly and the Office of the President will go, I mean, will still be in office. While the Office of the President and the Office of uh, the National Assembly members will still be in office until the election time. And the local government will leave office three months before election. That's my observation. Um, Thank you. Um, can I just ask, is this in, covered in the bill? Or can you refer us to a section in the bill dealing with this? Is it an issue that is in the electoral bill? Well, um, I, I can't confirm to you whether it is an issue in the electoral bill, but I mean, as, as what I said here, that's the reason why I bring it up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we may not be able to refer specifically to the section, but we'll take it on board. It's a concern that you have raised. If it is in the bill, We'll have a look at it. If not, we will address it as a concern. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, do I see another hand? Oh, who wants it? All right, you have the floor. Sorry, let me just change the button. Sorry, let me, let me change the button. Okay, uh, <coughs> good morning once again. Uh, I'm Vice Chairman Jenja Mure. Uh, my observation is about uh, the voters' registration. Because uh, in that section, we have seen that uh, there is certain documents that we need to So, in the province and uh, at the black at the level, so 
Okay. At the black level, you will see certain people without all these documents. So, is it possible? Because, uh, like the Lord Mayor have just mentioned, uh, chiefs will not know all these people in this uh, at, at the at the grassroots level. So, is is it possible for the Ankaris to be able to attest on behalf of people, maybe with five elderly uh, 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 people within the village, because attestations. Sometimes in, at the village level, attestations are not even available to alcoholics. So people will like to have this attestation from alcoholics, but it's always a difficult uh, way for them to be able to get it. So it's going to be a concern uh, if these people uh, are not uh, having any of these documents, not the passport, not the uh, birth certificate, not the ID, not the, the old voter's card, and they still want to register. So, and if they went for, the, they went for this attestation, maybe from the alcali or the chief, and they cannot be able to access it. So, what are the possibilities for these people to be, uh, for them to get registered? So, the other aspect is like the, the voters transfer. Uh, I learned that uh, the voters transfer, some people want to, uh, they, they said, whether uh, attachment of fee have to be incorporated in the voters transfer. If you are, maybe, you are a, a, a native of Banjo, so you the election finds you somewhere else. So and you 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 were not able to come back to Banjo for for voting. So is it allow the person to vote without making any payments? Because if you want to attach payment onto this, it's going to discourage other people from voting. Because uh, this is uh, the right of every individual in this country to 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 vote. So uh, like the. The, the other the other aspect you want to say you want to clarify something yeah, I just want to clarify. okay okay just want to clarify that uh, the we are consulting you and we want you to give us your opinion on the issues that you are raising okay so it's your opinion that we are interested in you don't need to ask questions. You just give us your opinion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, okay, as I said earlier, like uh, that of the voters' registration, I would, in my opinion, I would like uh, people at the grassroots level to be also give, uh, to be given that opportunity to be able to be registered without producing, if they cannot come up with all these uh, listed documents, Maybe with the recommendation of the alkali and that of five elderly persons within that community to be given the right to be able to issue a voter's card. So the other aspect has been just mentioned by uh, uh, Honorable Seku Jawara. That's the distance of the, the, the polling stations where people normally go uh, for voting. Uh, in my world, we have a specific place where these people, if you don't send them vehicles to go and pick them, because it's very far, it's almost around six to seven kilometers, so and they are always discouraged of voting. So. If the IEC, we are recommending that the IEC, I am recommending that the IEC uh, uh, put it in, into consideration in those places that are far, so that they can issue polling station within a, a, a premises where they can access easily. So that is, uh, those are my contributions for the moment. Thank you. Um, just a point of clarification. The second, second to last point, are you saying for councils to be given the right to issue voters card or what? No, 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 you don't, what, you don't what, hear me clearly. What, what I'm saying, the, the alcalis mm -hmm. in each village, you know they are saying that uh, the chief and the alcali for the attestation. So if somebody comes with a, a voter's card or passport or those documents, uh, documents that are listed under the IEC bill, so you should be issued a uh, voter's card. So, but uh, we learn in our, in, in our society, we have uh, difficulties of getting attestation in fact from alcalis because sometimes you will see a ward councillor will be doing that favor, trying to photocopy as much as he, he or she could to pass it to certain alcalis for them, uh, for the citizens to access those attestations. So what I'm recommending is like if they went to the, uh, the registration center where these people need to be registered, and this citizen, they were not able to get none of these documents. So I am, uh, in my opinion, I'm saying the alcali and five elderly members within any particular village should be given that authority to be able to register people who you know that they did not get access to those uh, uh, attestations that are written on, on, on documents. 
That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you for the clarification. Should it be at the point of registration or should it be at the point of registration or yes. at the point of registration where they are registering? Exactly. So you yes. want Alcanos or five mm -hmm. five elders to be there at exactly. the point of registration? Exactly. I think. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any other hand that hasn't, someone who hasn't spoken yet before we come to the second round? We have a hand at the back. Right. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Okay. My opinion. In this, pro I am I am Councillor Tunku Jame from Sulia Town Hall by New City Council. Okay, my opinion in this discussion is all about the diaspora voting to be considered one, and number two, voters registration should be con should be a continued process, like the ID card. I think so. That can also help. And during the election time, as far as you have your voter's card, wherever it meets you, you should be allowed to vote at least. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Once again, I am Odu Jonga, CEO of Bekama Area Council. Now, I just have a few observations uh, with respect to uh, part three, that is the electoral boundaries. Um, we will all see uh, that vote or districts are de shall be determined uh, in accordance with the Local Government Act. I just want to suggest that uh, let this section be more specific. Uh, with regards to the section of the local government act and then the year, because it's 2002. So that is important because the, the local government act had, has undergone a lot of amendments. And it's important, although it's a principal act, it's important to indicate the year and also the section uh, of the local government act. That is my observation. Now, the other observation. Before you go further, which section exactly? Five. Part three, which, sec which clause? 11. 11, okay. Yeah. Our second observation is, is about the establishment of political parties. Um, we read that the political parties uh, are expected to... to declare a source of, source of, source of funding. And then I, I, want, I just want to observe uh, that there should be a section that will compel the political parties to declare or disclose their source of funding. Because if you stop at that particular section where you require the political parties to disclose their source of funding, you know, and then uh, you don't indicate what happens if, if they fail to do so, I think we need to hold the political parties into account uh, with respect to uh, their, their funding. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um Yes, um, good morning. Um, I'm talking about the uh, date of the candidate. Um, what I'm seeing here is, uh, my name is Chen Dugui, Councilor Terra, or Air Council. Date of the candidate. Uh, it's section 54, date of the candidate. <coughs> it's saying that the date of an independent candidate shall not be a ground to postpone an election. I think that is there, whether you are independent or a political opponent. So I, I, on my opinion, I don't like that, that section at all. Mm -hmm. I want it to be amended because when an independent candidate there or a political candidate, a political party candidate is the same. So that's my own opinion. Thank you very much. We'll take the next one.
Thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. Um, anyway, um, I just want to, uh, by the suggestion of um, OCHIA, uh, that um, we put together our, um, our vision notes. Um, there, probably by Monday, we can submit. And also, if, uh, if you can get the soft copy, so we can equally share it with our counselors to look at it. Thank you very much. I think these things are sold at from they can buy from printing. Mm -hmm. I don't, the the bill actually. I think councils because this is not the first time. I think councils should make an effort um, in relation to bills that touches what you do to get the copies as soon as it is laid. Um, they sell them at printing. You have the money. You can buy. <laughs> Okay. It's not our responsibility to send. We have sent them also a copy of the bill because since we are asking them to look through it. <laughs> just asking a question, I think. Yeah, uh, no, that's an inter but I don't think we are responsible. Once a bill is gazetted, it's public knowledge and everyone needs to grab a copy, and especially when it affects what you do. Um, I'll get the next person. There, we have a hand there. And I've just been told the bill was sent to them. Yes, yeah. they're just confirming that the bill was sent to the um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Honorable Idrissa Sise, Councillor for uh, Chairman Ward Nyanja District. Um, my suggest I'm just suggesting that in Nyanja District, it is a district, one constituency, and also one ward. Now, can we please look at that situation? A district, a consequence, and one word. Now, looking at the area, there are some villages that are very far from the polling stations, which I believe is discouraging a, a high number of good um, uh, voter turnout. So, therefore, I am suggesting that if can we um, uh, add up more polling stations in Nyanija. Yeah, that is my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's an important observation. Thank you. I'll take the next person. By email and by WhatsApp. Madam Chair, I have uh, an observation. First and foremost, I want to agree with the gentleman there. Who said that is that? So it doesn't matter whether it's a uh, candidate, independent candidate, or a normal candidate. And um, somebody mentioned about five elders. My question here is how to select them and how to define an elder. I think it's very, very important to know who to select, how to select them, who is responsible to select them, how will we know. For example, you have somebody, by, uh, you have Fatu in the village who have 80 years old, and then you have the elders who are 55 years old. So how can they attest that Fatu was born or is a Gambian race, and this, this is a concern. <laughs> so I think we should look uh, on on um, uh, on that properly. So and again, um, very very important for women leadership. The prohibition um, uh, we said uh, prohibitions during elections, and that is part six, uh, part six, clause ninety two. I think that clause should be broadened and widened. When we said. The cross is saying insult, malign, or slander, slander another candidate. Madam Chair, I think this is very, very important when we have more, when we want, when we want to have more women leadership. We cannot just stop it on this. What is the penalties? What is defined as an insult? 
because we have seen the, how nasty the political arena is now. It is very, very nasty, so I think this is very, very important when we are all yearning for women leadership. Again, involvement of the CA force. I don't know where it is in the act, to be quite honest. I didn't see it anywhere, so uh, Madam Chair, don't ask me where. It might not be here in, in, the, in the act, but again, as the Chairman uh, Bill Kama Irikans said, when he do mention about uh, uh, chairmen uh, or mayors going out of the, the positions and uh, three months before elections, I do understand with uh, parliamentarians, you cannot go three months before elections because when something happens in the, in, the, in, in the country, who is so, supposed to be there? So obviously you have to be there and I support that. So, but with local government also, I think it is important for us also to be there so that the, we can take care of the community when something happens. So, um, involvement of the CSOs. I think elections, the most important actors in elections are the CSOs because they, they're independent. But what is the bill talking about the CSOs? I don't know, but if it is not there, please let us all advocate for them to be key actors in, in, in this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I would advise we include all of these very important points raised in the position paper again. Um, uh, before, asking for clarity. Yeah, clarity. Um, I think like my honorable colleague um, Suadu said, we expecting you to give us feedback and tell us what you want in the bill, not actually, because if you ask us questions and then we will go, we, there wouldn't have been any need to call the councils here. So you are saying that you wanted to know how they um, elect these elders. Can you give us a suggestion what you expect and how you want us to put it in the bill? I think that would be more useful. I think when we were in Wasu, somebody did give us some suggestions. If you can give us suggestions as guidance, because that is why we are here. We need you to guide us. We are lawmakers, but we cannot make laws without your guidance. I cannot guide you because I'm totally against the five members. Elders, yes. Elders. She has so I cannot guide you. Clearly. I'm, I'm, I think I'm totally she was against it. a concern that it should not be included because it will be difficult to choose whom among the elders in the village you would, would you choose. Um, can we? Yes, we have, we have noted it down. Um, we have another hand up. Yes, I just wanted to elaborate more on this elderly issues because, uh, like uh, in uh, the, the previous election in my village, what happened was like in uh, in each Kabilo, we have elderly people whom you know that the Kabilo will recommend these people on behalf of that particular Kabilo. So, if people from that Kabilo, the elderly person who is representing, you know each and every member who is within that cabinet. That's the way we were doing it in those days. So, but uh, what I was raising is like, uh, if the voters cards uh, were not available with that person, he did not have an ID, he did not have a passport, uh, I'm recommending that those, uh, those, those elderly members from that cabinet to be able to access with the, with the, with the alcohol for those people to be issued uh, voters card. That was my point anyway. Thank you. So, the point is noted. Exactly. Um, can we give, before you get a second chance, we need to give, um, priority to those who haven't spoken yet. Yeah, um, good morning. I'm Musa Sawane, Councillor for Jaring Ward. Uh, I just want to um, clarify about the choosing of elders being at the registration point. I think uh, at the village level, each um, village have council of elders, and uh, I think uh, if we are to consider for the elders being at the registration point, uh, it is the council of elders for those um, villages where the registration is taking place to be at the registration point. I think this should not be um, a serious matter for that. That's my own um, opinion. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I will hand back to the chair to take over. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Honorable Vice Chair. Can we take more interventions from council? Is there any? Okay, yes. The, the chairman, Mansa Kongo. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, let me say, probably from my side, um, most of what I will present would be contained in the position paper. I think we will coordinate that accordingly. But for the meantime, for the purpose of the discussions, um, I won't be able to quote a special section. But um, as a matter of concern, the three months uh, um, allowance that is uh, given between the um, departure of um, chairpersons and mayors from office before elections uh, is a special concern. For me, my suggestion will be um, this should not happen. They, uh, they should stay in, uh, in office until the elections are conducted. Um, I am saying this and I'm going to give uh, just a brief explanation that may not be contained in the bill, but I think it's important. Um, in terms of uh, resource uh, management and, and, and implication, um, within this period of three months, sometimes uh, the interim that will come, who knows the, the, the manifesto or the objective, because they might not be elected by the people, or they might not be representing the will and wish of the people. So within this period of three months, what will be their management style like? Style like? Sometimes, uh, out of experience, when the next uh, team comes, you see a lot of things that probably may not be pleasing. So I am giving a general recommendation and a suggestion that the three months do not have to be there in the bill. If it is, if it is not there, in fact, there should be a recommendation that uh, the bill should carry along that, just like the president, uh, the NAMS, the chairpersons and mayors shall stay, to the end of their term when elections are held. That will better manage our resources. And for the part of um, 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 the five elders in the communities, we all agree we have our community dynamics. And I think we should not lose sight of that. We have Kavilos, Kavilo heads, village elders in, in, in bigger communities like Serakunda and others. We have support and we, have, we all know you know, in these subwards, we have elders, and these elders know each other very well. Even wherein sometimes there is, you know, um, um, probably limitation that everybody will not know each other. But to some degree, in the bigger community subwards, at subward level, I don't mean generally. Like if you say Serakunda, I may not know somebody in Dibakunda when I'm from Old Joshua. But in Old Joshua, in Old Joshua, I'm, I'm sure five elders. We are selected. Will 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 at least have a fair idea. It it might not be as perfect as we think, but that will be a good guide. Rather than for me, the chiefs should be exempted. That's my recommendation. Chiefs should completely be exempted, because I come from Kia West, a native of Kia West. The chief is in Tangula. There is every tendency that the chief may not know me. From Jatawa, I'm from Jatawa, more than 42 kilometers away. So that one, I, I totally would suggest the chiefs should go out completely. And if I, I better go in for the five elders who might be well off here with what is happening in the community. So the rest of probably what I will say will add up in the, with my colleagues in the, in, the, in, the, in the position paper, just like what we've, did, we've done for the uh, constitutional review process. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. I am observing on the Clause 94, Equal Access to Airtime and Public Radio and Television. <laughs> Number three, I am just suggesting for that particular section to be off there because looking at the Commission, with the, power, uh, with the powers to arrange with this, uh, the, the public radio and television for the airtime to all political parties. I don't think there should be any need again for political parties to write to the commissioner 
requesting for another time, uh, time air time for the same radio or, or television. If parties need such, they can go to the private radios or television and do their advert or campaigns on those particular platforms. But like on the same uh, political, uh, uh, the same uh, public radios and television, after giving the political parties airtime, you're telling them, after giving you the airtime, you can come back to us in written form, requesting for another airtime. To me, that equality, that is uh, uh, in, in, in close two, in section two, might not be uh, uh, seen. And the second one, sorry. The, the second one is in page 14, clause 16, general and sub supplementary registration. I am with the objection that uh, the commissioner may, it should be, I, I am suggesting for shall make the necessary arrangement for the continuous registration of voter nationwide than may, meaning you are giving room for either uh, the commissioner to decide that particular section and if things might go other way around, Others might not be in favor, but if I stick something uh, a bit stronger, would be put in the position than me. I, I prefer for that. Thank you. Yes, I saw the hand of CEO Masi Hiraka. Good afternoon. I am Usman Ture, CEO of Basi Area Council. Uh, with the indulgence of my chairman, I want to make uh, this comment <coughs> on part three, uh, subsection 19, registration centers. Uh, to my observations, uh, the registration centers need to be increased. Uh, because if you look at the registration centers, for example, uh, in Garawal, we have only, I have seen only Garawal A and B. Okay, if you move to other places like in Congo South, in Gunjo, we have only registered on center, three of them. So if I'm wrong, please, I stand, I stand to be corrected. Uh, to my observations, uh, most of the people may not likely vote because they are, they are, they are bored by the long queues at the time of the registration. And because of that, they will not bother themselves to go and register, and they will not have voter's card, and therefore they will not vote. So if the registration centers can be increased in some of these places, uh, that one will also help. Thank you, that is my observation. Thank you. Did I see any other hand yes, up? I, I yes. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, this is Mr. Brown, Vice Chairman, under the Council. Uh, the, for me, I want to protest on the replacement of voter's card. Uh, a voter who claims that his or, her, his, or, his or her card is lost, stolen, or destroyed, the person they attach a fee. To me, uh, I would say no to that. Because if you go to the rural area, most of these voters uh, sorry, most of these candidates or whatever, they don't go to the, uh, they don't go to people and sensitize them about the value of election. So if a particular voter's card got lost, so you see this person, if you assign the person to go and look for it and a fee is attached to it, he or she may not send, he or she will reject it because they don't know the value of these cards. Thank you. Yes. So the, the third observation I just forgot about that is a Brikama administrative area. Uh, it is written Congo is to be demarcated into two consequences and south into two consequences, putting uh, Combo Central and Combo North with no uh, uh, distinguish because looking at uh, Combo Central is Brikama North and South, and looking at uh, Combo North also is like a sanitary new uh, Yundum and. Uh, Busumbala. 
So uh, squeezing them up, uh, we are not sure that that's, that's good enough. Because looking at Combo Note alone, um, have almost about 17% of the country's population. Uh, pressing that into one consequence might not be favorable or, or might not be in, 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 in good line to my situation. Yes, you want to clarify? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm telling you is um, the issue of this stomach case has already been seen by the Minister of Justice. This was an error. And now this is the um, correct person that will be handling. Thank you. Have you heard him? You heard what he said? I, I, I heard him, but I, then I couldn't understand if it has been corrected. Combo Central is already two consequences. And here you have put it there as Combo Central. So let me uh, break out my article. Uh, uh. Okay, Honorable Can I further clarify? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, that was an error, but it has been corrected. The consequences are going to be maintained as is. So they, they are okay, 53 in number. Combo Central is Brinkama North and Brinkama South. They are as it is. So what is entailed there was an error, but it has been corrected. Yeah, I know the, the gentleman's agreement is what is in the bill. So you are absolutely right to point it out. But we were given supplementary seat that shows that constituencies are to remain the way they are. So in the bill proper, you will not have it there. But every member have the supplementary seat that shows that constituencies are maintained the way they are. So you don't have to worry, OK? Can I, see, can I see any hand around this? And if not, we go back to Yes, I saw your hand. May I rest one moment? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is Alaji Pane from Kerawan Ward, Kerawan Area Council. I think uh, most of the issues have been dealt with, but I just want to raise one point, which is, I think, very important with the issues of, uh, we have witnessed the emergence of new political parties, you know, coming thick and fast. Um, I think this is because the bar is too low for a lot of them to be just encouraged to form their political parties. So, um, I realize also that there is this uh, reduction in the area of their fees. Uh, so probably this is the reason why we are seeing, you know, a high, you know, attrition of uh, high high rate of uh, emergence of them coming. Um, whether it is the nomination of voters card or the fee that was attached. So either of them, I think it is important we re revisit, revise those things and see whether we are going to, because we have realized there is malpractice in the voter registration uh, denominations. Some of the voter's cards are being duplicated, duplicated, duplicated. A political party will register one, and another one will use the same one and register again. So we need to correct those things and at least raise the number of voter's cards uh, in that aspect. And also, uh, reducing the price, uh, reducing the fee from one, $1 million to 500000 I think it's still going to encourage political parties coming in more. And Gambia cannot accommodate, you know, uh, that number of um, uh, political parties because it's a very small Thank you. Can, yes, Chairman uh, Basi Area Council, then Mayor Banjo. Good afternoon, once again. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Uh, my concern here is the registration of the diaspora. Um, I think the registration of diaspora is very, very important. Um, I am suggesting um, diaspora is section 14, uh, clause 3. Uh, clause 3, I am suggesting we add uh, any, <coughs> sorry, and any party that is going to be responsible of the registration of a diaspora should be on the oath, which is very important because diaspora issue is very, very important and it's dedicated. So I'm suggesting 
for the individual to be on the road when he's going to uh, proceed on the <coughs> Mr. Chair, um, priority of voting. Priority of voting, it states here that in the casting of votes, the presiding officer shall give priority to the candidates contesting the elections, pregnant or lactating women, persons with disability, and the elderly. Here I'm saying that priority should also be given to journalists and persons or duties, for example, doctors or anybody that is wearing uniforms. Um, to be precise, police officers and doctors, but I think journalists are also very important to be given priority because they act as a police during that day. Thank you. Yes. Flat, can you pass the mic for, okay. Good job. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. Um, I just wanted to contribute another observation with concerns uh, uh, election petitions. I'm suggesting if um, um, we can have a special court that will um, deal with election petitions. I'm suggesting we have a special court than the Supreme Court because um, sometimes um, these things, elections needs to be um, look at uh, with a special uh, judge that will treat uh, elections. Uh, I am just suggesting. The other suggestion is uh, concerning Nyanija. Um, I am suggesting if Nyanija can be demarcated into two um, words so that um, it, can, it can help um, the people living there to have access to this Polling stations. Thank you very much. Thank you. And before you come, the co chair wants to make some comments. Let me, let me just clarify this demarcation. The, the, the bill is dealing with the method of demarcation and uh, whether it's the IEC or it's the special uh, uh, commission that will be established to demarcate. The Constitution has already dealt with that. But when it comes to operational matters, it's just talking to IEC at each given state, and then they will adjust. Uh, whether you should have a, a, another polling station, additional polling station, all that is left with the IEC when they are doing their operation. But that is not, uh, that not, cannot be captured by the bill. Yeah, thank right. you. Yeah. Invite yeah. That's just there. Go ahead and invite yeah, go ahead. Okay, we can have the Manso Congo, yes, we can continue. Hold on, huh? hold on. Chairman, Sorry. hold on. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I think the point they are raising regarding the number of polling stations um, is that maybe because they are the ones in their constituencies, maybe what we can do in the bill is to say the IEC needs to consult with the councils to tell them where to put this post. I think that is very important because they know their areas better than the IEC. I think that is what they are probing us to, to do in the in the bill. Anyway, um, I, I think ideas are coming from them. Like, we have to take their opinion. But I equally want to say this. I vividly remember that IEC were on the ground to look at the available polling stations, look at the population of the communities and the constituencies for that matter, and see where there is need for increment. I don't know whether they consulted um, National Assembly members vis-a-vis -vis the councillors, but notwithstanding, what is important here is what you put on paper as your recommendation. That is what we will carry forward. So we need not delay work on it. We'll just see what you put on paper. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Chairman, Ida Council. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, specifically, I just observe on the supplementary registration. It has always been very important to me <coughs> that uh, there is continuous uh, supplementary registrations. Um, bearing in mind each day and time somebody will turn to 18. So, and it is indicated in our laws that uh, when somebody is 18 is qualified to vote. So if that is the case, and there is this long periodic 
uh, supplementary registration, somebody might be denied of the opportunity to participate, um, either in the presidential or the uh, uh, legislative or the uh, local government elections. So it is outlined here that um, the commission may make it necessary, uh, uh, sorry, the, committee, the commission may make necessary arrangements for supplementary. I, I, I want to suggest that the may there for me is not very convincing. Um, there has to be um, probably um, um, a, a stipulated decision the, that it should be done. Because when people, when citizens turn to 19, you cannot deprive them their right to participate in the decision making process of their, of their country. So for me, I am not con convinced with this may. I know probably there should be some, sorry, I, I guess there should be something to, to drop it down to say that it should be done and it should be done. So that's my point. That will be my recommendation. Sure. We cannot oversight it. Sure. When people turn to 918, they, they have all rights to uh, participate. Yes, Thank you. All right, can I take the lady at the back? I think somebody earlier on raised that issue yes. and uh, even went forward to recommend the word may to be changed. To shall. The word shall. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Thank make you. emphasis. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, good afternoon. I am Honorable Fatih Allo. I want to uh, discuss uh, on the deposit for the presidential. To my own view, it's uh, at the low side. That is, that is why um, you have a lot of political parties coming in, and that is not good for our country. But in the same vein also, the, the, the sum for the council is at the high side, because you are dealing with the grassroots, you are dealing with the local people. If you ask them to pay an amount of 10,000, that will uh, deprive others to come on board financially. So to my own opinion, it's at the high side if you want to get more local government authorities. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, gentlemen at the back. And then I will talk to the vice chair. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman, for giving, I thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, yes, I concur with uh, my colleague, the councillor, who just recently uh, spoke there. Yes, uh, for the councillors, the deposit is high due to the fact that if you come into office as a councillor, you have no salary, you have no pensions, you have no retirements, you have the benefits, and you are the one at the grassroots level who deals with the community every day. You attend social functions, like naming ceremonies, wedding uh, uh, ceremonies, you go to funerals, CRS, whatsoever. All the activities, anything that is happening within the, within the world, you will be consulted. And you are not paid. You are elected, you have no salaries, you have no retirements. So I think this National Assembly Select Committee, last time they came to, they came to uh, our council and we told them about this thing. You see, looking at local council elections, in my opinion, I think Gambia should go out of it because the resources you raise to become a representative at, at the end of the day, if you become a representative, you, you don't get it. It's a waste of time. Some of us leave good positions. Uh, they were teachers. Some of them were having good positions. And they, you know, now they are continuous. So they have no salaries. Please, can we please look at, look at this thing? So I think I agree, I concur with her that yes, the amount is high for councillors. $10,000 is too much. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I earlier said that from him we go to the vice chair, gender Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, as now once again. Uh, I'm uh, here to talk of the bill itself, uh, the IEC bill itself, because uh, we have been talking of sections, but uh, what, is, what is captured in many of these clauses when it comes to the grassroots level, we still have problems there. So uh, it's, it's supposed to be the mandate of the IEC 
to be able to go and raise awareness because we still have people at the grassroots level who, because we have been using tokens since 1965, we are using these tokens, ballot box. But still now, we have people at the grassroots level who if you don't know how to vote. So I think uh, this, is, this is the responsibility of the IEC to go and raise awareness to, to the grassroots level to, so that these people can be able to know how to vote because these are all matters. And we have also on the section uh, 71 where they state that things that you cannot do at the polling ground. So we will the same people, be, we, people will be going to the polling station with, 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 with their, with their uh, party, party t-shirts, you know. Many things normally happen at the polling grounds and there is no action that, that are normally taken. So if we are talking of uh, being serious here, maybe we are talking of sections, then these are things that we, we, we want to amend. Uh, maybe we, you, the National Assembly, are asking for our inputs. So the first thing that I'm going to uh, emphasize is for the IEC to take it on their, uh, take it as a responsibility to read the grassroots uh, root people, make awareness campaign, and make them know exactly this is how the bill is working and this is what they want in maybe at the at the polling grounds because some of these people may not know. So and for us, for for people like us who are here today to represent our our electorate, we don't have that uh, resources to be able to mobilize our people, to talk to them about how they should vote and what are the do and the do. Uh, are, are